is what inspired you to begin to conduct research on the Serengeti ecosystem? Well, I started out in life, uh, I was born in Africa and I was familiar with East Africa and what wildlife lived there as a small boy. And I had determined that I wanted to go and live that life and uh, study those animals. That's what I set out to do. And I had the opportunity as an undergraduate to go on a project to Serengeti, studying birds as it was. And it was at that time that I was introduced to the whole ecosystem. And it immediately occurred to me, even though I was an undergraduate, that this was completely special. There was nothing else like it in the world. And in fact, I think the world agrees with that because when they came to invent World Heritage Sites in 1972, they had a vote as to which one they considered to be the most important site in the world and Serengeti came out on top. So from that point of view, Serengeti is unique. And the question was, what makes it unique? And so I decided to set out to understand how the whole ecosystem worked. And I was at the age of 21 at that point. Um, and I spent my life, whole life, studying that and answering that question. So when uh, I was asked to come back to start my work as a, as a PhD student, and uh, the reason was that early counts of the animals were showing that they were increasing very fast. Now, the rate at which species increase is determined by the size of the animal. So insects can increase incredibly fast because they can produce thousands of eggs every year. But very large animals cannot do so because they can only produce babies, uh, if you take an elephant, for example, at the maximum rate of one every four years. So they're going to increase very slowly. And what we found was that wildebeest, buffalo, elephants, were all increasing at their maximum capacity. Now, this is not usual because if you look around you in the world, you'll see that there are some species, um, if you look around you in Colorado, you'll see some species that, that are common, uh, like pronghorns and, and uh, white-tailed deer, um, maybe some elk, and you'll see other species that are quite rare. And, and what you notice though, is that they always seem to be like that over long periods of time, over a century or so. So even though animals can reproduce and they can increase, they obviously don't do so for very long. That means that uh, the only way that, that we can counteract the births, the rate of increase, is that there has to be deaths. And the deaths match, on average, the deaths match the birth rate in every population, in every ecosystem in the world. So when you see something changing so rapidly, you know that there has to be something special going on. And so that was the question. Why were these things increasing as fast as they were biologic, biologically capable of increasing? 